Okay, you've made it to the last video of the series. This is the final group of selectors, and they're called attribute selectors. They're not part of the pseudo selector groups. They are their own group, and they allow you to target elements for styling according to the element's attribute and attribute values. In this first example, this style rule is saying P elements with a language attribute are going to be colored red. You can see we have one P element that has a language attribute. And it doesn't matter what the language is, as long as it has the language attribute. So the paragraph with a language attribute got styled. And you can put any attribute that you want here. So if I change this to title, and then I give this paragraph a title attribute, say hello, then that's the one that's going to be styled. And if I put my mouse over, it's going to say hello because it now has a title attribute. So you put any attribute name that you want right there. And it's that way for all of these attribute selectors. Okay, this next example, we're targeting button elements that have the attribute type with a value of reset. So let's see what we get. So the one button that has the value for, of reset, it's a reset type button. That's the one that got selected. So what if I remove the value portion and we just say button with type attribute? You can see all three of them have the type attribute here. So all three of them will get selected. So that's why you can specify the value. That way if it's only a certain type of input or a certain type of button, Okay, now the next attribute selector uses the tilde key. And what the little squiggly symbol means, that designates that this value could be any one of a list of space separated values. So you can see for the value property, we have space separated list of values. So what this rule is saying that in the value attribute, if the token the is found anywhere in this list of space separated words or space separated strings. So you can see this one has the word the or the right there. This one does not have the word the. So it will not get selected. But the first one will because it has the word the. So it changes that field to red if the word the is found. So remember this one is for a space separated list of tokens. Now this next attribute selector uses the caret symbol. It's the little symbol above the six on your keyboard. Now what the caret symbol means before the equal sign there is that specifies that this value must lead the value here. So we have three A elements and they all have href attributes. So if any of them begin, if any of their href attribute values begin with HTTP, then they're going to get selected. If HTTP is not leading the value, then the element will not get selected. Do you see? The ones with the full absolute URL starting with HTTP are selected, and this one's not. So just remember this symbol means that this value has to be leading the value where it's found in the element. Now this next attribute selector uses the dollar sign symbol right before the equal sign. And that's very much like the last one, but what this specifies is that this string must be found at the end of the value. So you see we have .com, .gov, and .org at the end of these href values. So the one that has the .gov is going to be selected because it ends with that string gov, and we get the expected result. Now this next attribute selector allows you to select elements if anywhere within the elements title value there is this substring found. So let's look in these title values down here to see if this substring is in any of them. It's not in that one and there it is right there, econ. So that means the second one is going to be selected because that substring is found anywhere within its value. And there you go. Now if I wanted to take this substring right here 
copy that and put it right there. And that means only this element should be selected now, right? Correct. And this uses the asterisk, the star symbol. And it's a way to target elements if the specified attribute has the substring anywhere in its value. Okay, we've come to our final attribute selector and the final selector in the entire list. Now this selector uses the the bar symbol before the equal sign. And what that specifies is that you are looking to match or select according to a hyphen separated list. So you can see we have P elements with language attributes and only one of them has this token right here. So this is the element that will be selected. Let's check and see. Yep. So if we change this to FR, it should target the first element. And there you have it. So that completes all of the CSS selectors. Now there'll be more added to CSS with the selectors level 4. So with CSS 4, there'll be new selectors. And then when they put out CSS 5 and 6 and 7, there'll be even more new selectors that they add to the, the technology. But for now, you have just learned, if you've watched all of these videos in this short series, you've just learned all of the CSS selectors.